of training. I'm still a little chewed up from, <clears throat> from deadlifting. See those gnarls on that bar coming. Tore me up, ripped up my shins a little bit, but that's, uh, that's all part of the business. We can handle that. Now, while I'm powerlifting, it's not really necessary uh, to come in and have a separate day for calves and biceps. Like Ed Cohn told me, biceps are like ornaments on a Christmas tree. They really don't do much. In the powerlifting uh, world, you rarely see guys doing curls, but in the off-season when I'm powerlifting, I still have to maintain these uh, bodybuilding body parts so that, uh, so that they're ready and they continue to improve for when I'm competing on stage. So I come in once a week, even, uh, even when I'm powerlifting, and try and keep the uh, try and keep moving on getting the arms bigger and getting the calves bigger. I've always had trouble with both those parts, but I've had good success over the last year using the, the theories that uh, Flex Wheeler taught me. And uh, uh, like from calves, uh, we're doing sets of 60. We'll do a 20, 20, 20. 60 straight repetitions. The first 20 will be with the heaviest weight I can handle for 20. And I immediately will drop the pin and do 20 more reps with a lighter weight and immediately drop the pin and do 20 more. I'll try and do four sets of 60. It puts an enormous amount of blood in the calves and I've uh, been able to realize some growth from that. And then when we go to biceps, I'll talk you through uh, uh, kind of his theories there and what's up. He put uh, over an inch on my arms in the last year. So starting out, we'll just uh, try and get the babies warmed up and stretched out. Try and get as much range of motion as I can. I know some folks like to lock their knees out, but my hamstrings aren't terribly flexible. That puts a lot of strain on the back of my knee, and I'm really trying to focus the strain on the calf, so I'll bend my knees slightly. And get a decent stretch at the bottom. This is the first kind of warm-up set, so I want to get everything stretched out so I'm not feeling any aches and pains. Rest it up so I can get started. Four sets of 60. But uh, I've lifted all my life, you know, even before I um, started training for bodybuilding shows after college. You know, I remember having a little weight set in the, in the garage when I was 12 years old out there, a little sand-filled plastic coated weights that the bar would bend every time you tried to put them all on there, which was only 100 pounds. So, uh, you know, I've lifted weights all my life. And, I, I, and even when I wasn't competing for the 10 years that I took off, um, but for the time that I was too poor to afford a gym membership, uh, I was in the gym and I was exercising. And I, you know, I didn't have any intent on competing, but I loved to lift. I loved to go to the gym. I loved the feel of it. Um, you know, and I wasn't huge. I, I you know, was probably just hanging out at, at 2.30, uh, maybe peaked out at 2.40. As the blood gets in, gets in there, you're going to get weaker and weaker, and your range of motion is also going to suffer. It's like we talked about when a muscle is engorged with blood, it's unable to stretch and contract as well. able to lock out anymore. Do whatever, do whatever I can. Here's, I don't have any weight on it. Just the sled, me and the sled. many as I could, so we went to failure, with drop sets, it's hard to feel it, hard to see it on camera, but the, the blood flow is just a, awesome, the way it feels, the amount of heat that generates in there, and just try and kick that, kick that blood out, stretch it out, do that again. I don't have a 
certain size or weight or anything that I'm that I'm uh, that I'm you know heart set on on being. I want to be healthy and I want to be fit. You know, I don't ever want to get sloppy. Um, uh, that's why it's important to me that while I'm powerlifting, I still maintain you know a, a, a relatively low body fat and and stay in, in good condition. Caps are one of the hardest muscle groups to, to grow. It's such a dense, resilient muscle. And it's strong. You know, every single step you take, you're moving your whole body with one calf. So it's, uh, you know, it's built to be real durable and real strong. <laughs> Sometimes I'll throw in a little heavier weights, but it doesn't seem to be nearly as effective. Higher rep, lower weight, drop sets, it's getting a lot of blood in there. You have to remember you use your calves as stabilizers when you do your leg press, your squat, your deadlift. Those calves are stabilizing the weight when you're pressing. So they do get quite a bit of stabilization stress from those heavy leg movements. So I use calf day just to pump them up as best I can. Get as much blood in there as possible. Try it again. Every set gets uglier than the last. The powerlifting, I think, is pretty short-lived for me. I, I don't know that my body will hold up to these big weights for more than another year or two, but the, the bodybuilding, you know, as long as you can, you look at Troy Alves and how incredible his physique is at his age, and you realize that you can continue to make refinements and improvements and, um, you know, just be in extraordinary condition. And uh, it's always been a part of my life, uh, even when I was uh, in college, when I was uh, working, when I was running my own businesses, uh, now that I'm competing. So I'll, uh, I'm training will be a lifestyle. I look at reps so far. I've only got about 18 or 10 or so. When I die out there, I'll have to finish the last 20 on the steps over here. By now, the feet are cramping up and pushing off the bar to help yourself. Just do whatever you can. Get all the reps in. Get as much blood flow in there as possible. We've already added some more size to the calves. It wasn't my gift, so I gotta keep working hard at it.
rest on between sets and dissipate all the blood and make sure she's fully recovered. But the bodybuilding movements, there's a little shorter rest time and blood stays in the muscle. Start some biceps. Try and do the same thing to the biceps. Pump them up. So we're gonna start a bicep workout. You know, back in the good old days, when I thought I knew better, I worked up to where I was curling two and a quarter for sets of 10. 225 pound straight bar curls for sets of 10. But they were hideous. You know, it was the, the rock back, push with the thighs, knee bend, shoulder dip, you know, kind of drop sort of movements that you see here and there. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why the biceps wouldn't grow. And uh, after working with Flex, what we decided to do was take the shoulders out of the movement and, uh, and just isolate the bicep. This is something that Tony Freeman talks about quite a bit. He wasn't able to, to really put serious size on his arms until he stopped trying to lift all the heavy weights stopped using his front delt as a lever for the movement and started just squeezing the bicep. Got to check your ego with the door because your weights are going to drop significantly. And now we're just going to shoot for a pump. We're going to try and contract the bicep as hard as we can. And notice when I'm contracting the bicep here that I'm not rotating the front delt forward. I'm not using momentum to develop a, a bicep curl that, that ends in a little bit of a drop. I'm just going to be squeezing the bicep today. I use a cambered bar these days because I can't rotate my arms all the way out for a straight bar. I don't have the flexibility anymore. So I use these bent bars. The movement is going to be a curl right here. That's the movement. That's what the bicep does. The bicep's just curling the weight right here. I know traditionally you bring it up here, but that's using your front delt as a lever to get the weight up using momentum. And you can't get a good bicep contraction. <clears throat> Once your shoulder's up, if you try and contract your bicep <clears throat> with a dumbbell or a barbell in your hand, the resistance is now straight down. It's not pulling against the bicep. So we don't want to use our shoulder as a lever. We want to leave it down here. 
Now when the bicep's fully contracted, there's still resistance against the bicep here, as opposed to no resistance here. So that's the, the idea is to keep constant tension, contract the bicep, eliminate the shoulder from the movement. Second thing I like to do is uh, superset my exercise. I'll go from a straight bar to a dumb dumbbell curl to a concentration curl, just like the calves, one after the other, using a slightly different angle or slightly different variation, but continually pumping lots of blood into the muscle. The more blood flow we can get in there, the better. Feels relatively warm. I got a sweat on. Tendons aren't screaming at me. So we'll, uh, we'll start our giants. We tilted slightly forward, and the biceps doing the movement. The biceps curling, there's no shoulder in the movement. We're getting full contraction. all the bicep does. There. It doesn't do this. It does this. Same thing with dumbbells. Track here. I'm not doing this number right here. Track here. Leaning forward slightly helps me continually going to remind me not to get my shoulder into the movement. I have to start bringing the elbow forward and the shoulder up. Just to contract the bicep. Finish with a little bit of a hammer curl. And again, just isolating the bicep. First set's pretty easy. Each set gets progressively harder, just like the calves. So eventually, you gotta lighten your weight or cheat your reps a little bit. Try and rest a minute between set. It's hard for a fat guy in the off season because I lose my lungs real quick. I can tote around all this. Wait, rest just long enough to collect my breath, make sure I maintain the pump in my biceps. Keep doing this until they're just screaming. So you can't do a full contraction. You'll notice when I get to the third and fourth sets, my contraction stops about right here. It'll be fully contracting for me. I won't be able to, even without weight, I won't be able to bring it all the way up. Now, long term, uh, you know, I'll compete as long as I'm having fun. I do this for fun. Um, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't have anything to prove to myself or to anybody else. Uh, I'm my own, own worst critic. I don't care what anybody says about uh, me, good or bad. Uh, I, at the end of the day, I'm judging myself, you know. Uh, and uh, I'm harder on myself than anybody can be, so I don't, I don't worry about it. It's hard not to want to cheat. I so want to swing this thing up. I want to swing it up. Don't do it. Just try and squeeze. Next set, we'll drop the weight so we can get a full contraction. And if uh, bodybuilding continues to be fun and I continue to progress, and I think I continue to put together a you know a good presentation. I don't want to linger around into my 50s up there just to just show up on stage because I have a pro card and I and I can, you know, taking last place in shows. Uh, that's not my deal.
have set the hammer movements a little more for Ricky Alice. Ricky Alice right here. You would think you breathe this heavy in bicep, maybe. Once you start supersetting these movements, pump a lot of blood in there. I'm trying to isolate the rest of your body from your arm. It's actually difficult to hold your hold your body back. Do not rock the hips. Do not swing the shoulder. The whole body's tense because you're just contracting the bicep, trying to keep everything else from moving. Blood pumps and tense. Let's do it again. So I want to be the best, I wanted to be the best 40 I could be. I want to be the best 50 I can be, you know, physically, mentally. And I want to be the best 60 I can be and, and uh, you know, continue to train in some fashion, whether it be, uh, uh, you know, just bodybuilding or powerlifting or whether it also incorporates some, some other types of fitness exercises. I, you know, I want to be as fit as I can be for as long as I can be. That's all the can do. Even without a weight, I can't go any higher than this. Biceps fully contracted right there. So there's no sense doing that. There's no additional benefit for the bicep. Shoulder does the movement. The bicep gets less work. Which is a little heavier on hammers. suck struggling with 35 pound dumbbells. I'm telling you, that's what works. Well, if I can hang the ego at the door, you can. For the longest time, I was never able to get my arms up over 20 inches. Started working like this with legs. Trained like this for a year now. And they're easily over 21, 21 and a quarter. With my upper body mass, my shoulders and forearms, the size they are, I'll probably have to get them to 22. Not like Dennis Wolf's problem. Just so they'll look decent on my frame. My back, the shoulders, the way they are. It's just a matter of trying to perfect the proportions, so I have to keep focusing on the arms.
I'll probably add another inch by pumping a bunch of synthol in the arms, but that'll never happen. I like to lift heavy weights. I like to deadlift big, big weights. Shit like that can only serve to weaken the tendons and cause a bicep tear, so plus it looks like hell. So I'll keep mine on Asherah, pump them up. I just love to do it anyhow, so I'll take what I can get out of the workouts. Whew. How about we do that one more time? It's hard to reset. I'll edit this out. through on three different exercises. That could be a bicep for 20 minutes, in and out, we eat and grow. I'm gonna throw in one more exercise that I like to do, I'll talk you through how I do it. Similar to this, like so concentrate on just the biceps. Just the reach control. Flex used to live on this machine. Every time you ever see him in a video, he's usually on this machine. Pumping his biceps up. And if you watch his form, you notice he doesn't rock his body a lot. He doesn't lean into the down portion. He doesn't get his elbow up off the bench and lean back on the up portion. Just like with these other exercises for biceps. If all your bicep does is this, then make your bicep do that. You don't have to do this, so do nothing extra for the bicep. You don't have to rock it back, pushing your feet off, and get your elbow up off the mat. Start using your shoulder. If that's not what your bicep does, don't do it. So get yourself locked in, keep the arm flat, stretch as far as you can, squeeze as high as you can. Flex had really good flexibility. He was able to stretch that arm all the way out. He was able to contract it a lot higher than me. My biceps are fully pumped right now, so this is full contraction. So what's the sense of doing this at the top? It's no more contraction. It's just a little body movement. Yeah. Same thing to pump a lot of blood in them. I'm gonna do some 21s. I'll do a seven at the bottom half. Help me focus on <coughs> stretching the tendon out. 
I know a lot of people, including Flex, talk about building the lower bicep or the upper bicep, blah, blah, blah. Your bicep attaches to the tendon wherever it attaches to the tendon, based on your genetics. Some people have biceps that almost dive into their forearm. I think those are beautiful. But it's misinformed to believe that you can take a bicep that stops here and ties into your tendon. Remember, the tendon inserts down here. If the bicep ties in here and the rest is tendon, you're not going to build bicep right here. It's not going to happen. So the whole bicep contracts, not the lower, not the upper. Whenever you flex your bicep, the whole thing contracts. You have an origin and an insertion, and the whole thing contracts one time. So you can't isolate certain portions and grow certain portions. So based on your genetics, where your origins are, where your insertions are, and your predisposition for slow twitch or fast twitch muscles and how big you can grow them, that's all you're going to get out of it. So do the best you can, but don't expect to have your biceps tie into your forearms like Arnold's if that's not what you started with. Do a bottom seven. Top seven. And a full seven. Great pump, 21 reps. Two presets here, and we'll have done 15 sets for biceps in 35 minutes. It's way more than nothing. You like to have your elbows in as much as you can. <clears throat> I don't have that kind of flexibility, so I do the best I can. It's really hard concentrating, isolating my body from this movement. I keep wanting to lean forward and I keep wanting to rock back. You can see it in, in the movement. You see me kind of jerk a little bit. I want to jump in there and use my body to help. It doesn't help. You stay focused, isolate the body from the bicep. You get an incredible burn. I don't really do forearm exercises because of all the, the gripping that you do in here, lat pull downs. Deadlifts, long pulley rows, curls, helps the, you get use the forearm on just about everything. So, got plenty of size here. <clears throat> if anything, probably a little too much because it detracts from the arms. And it's the ratios that, that uh, give you those good placings in bodybuilding shows. Is you have small joints, good muscle bellies, uh, you're going to appear uh, bigger and better than some thick power lifter dude like me. <laughs> so I just got to keep stabbing away. Contraction right now. The muscle is so pumped that the only way I can get my arm any closer is to push it. So I really wanted to start rocking that weight. But your contraction's done here. If it's pumped and that's it, that's all you're going to get. Rocking doesn't help. That's biceps. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Love that blood. Let's go eat and grow.